is called deferred initialization. So here we create we create a network here. As again, this is the example we used during this lecture is two dense layers. And we get a network. Let me let me de delete this one, make it shorter. So we create a network and print the connect parameters, returns all the parameters you have. What you can see that, well, uh, the weight here, the shape, we know 256, this is the output shape we specify here. Because we didn't tell anything about the input shape, it is zero at this moment. So you can see the zero here. Similarly, bias, we know that no matter the input size, that the bias is already is a vector. So you uh, have the same names as the output. So bias, I know the shape. The second this layer, again, I don't know the shape because um, I, I, um, I, I don't know. I didn't infer from the fr uh, previous layer right now. And the, but bias is fine. OK, so at this moment, we give some shape, but only partial information already. So we cannot infer, uh, get all these shapes for the other parameter yet. Now, again, we call initialize. That's a tricky thing. We call it initialize, but this function actually doesn't call anything. You just initialize. You can tell me, OK, what initialization method they're going to use, Gaussian or uh, constant or xvir, or which device you're going to have. But again, I still don't know the input size. So if you call the connect parameters, nothing changed. Still a bunch of zeros here. So if you access this, if, if you're going to access the data, you get nothing. Because in with I don't know shape, I didn't allocate the memory right now. What I really do is like I give the input x. I feed x into data. Now I know the input size. Because x have 20, the feature is 20, so now I invert the network, the shape is 20, and also I run the second layer, I know it's 256. So the tricky thing here, in most of the cases, if you didn't specify the in input shape, you cannot access the parameters until you actually put the actual data in. All you can, all you can do, you can specify the input shape at the beginning, but you didn't do that, you didn't get access to the parameters. OK, so that's, that's the key thing uh, maybe you're going to uh, remember. So let's look into what actually happens there. I define my init function. I do nothing, just print when I'm going to init this function. So again, I get a network. I call initialize, give my initial function. Nothing output it, which means my initializer didn't output yet, didn't ask, uh, execute yet because I don't know the input shape right now. Now, I generate x, generate x, fit x into the fold function. You can see that okay, now I have the data. Before I run the fold function, I just call my initializers, which is calling here. Now I can initialize the weight. Well, the second time. The second fold pass, I should not do that. Yeah, because we're going to update that, I cannot initialize it again. So that only happens on the first time um, you didn't call that before. If I do a force reinit, then because if I do that, because before I already fit data, the network already knows the shape. So if I call init again, actually init the function there, here, because I know the shapes. The other thing that you, you, you really don't want to defer the initialization, you can do like as uh, similar to what my customized uh, uh, dense layer before, you can specify the input units. You can specify this dense layer, the input size 20, and this dense layer, the input size is 256. Now I know the shape at the beginning, so if I call initializer, initialize, I actually call this immediately. OK, so that's, that's all about things. Um, even that we only 
do the very simple things, but at the end, end we're gonna talk about hundreds of layers convolution neural networks, so deferred initialization is pretty important because you cannot, now it's a simple network, I know each layer size, but if I got hundreds of layers, it's really hard to compute the size internally. So that's, uh, usually we use deferred initialization. Okay, um, so